So let's have a look at the NIP2 software by John Cupid, which uses the libvips library underneath. It's like a spreadsheet, so if we open an image, I'm going to use one that we used to demo a lot from the National Gallery by Jan Gossart. You see this cell now contains an image, and if we double click on that, we will open the viewer, and you can pan around this, if we go to pan mode, you can drag drag it with the mouse. There we are. This is the guy holding onto a pillar. Um, if we zoom out, fit, that's the whole image. If we go back into one-to-one -one mode, one of the fun things about NIP is if we make a filter function on this now, for example, um, Sobel edge detection. As we pan around, we, we will actually be processing the image, so it's very instantaneous. You can, of course, um, make regions, so if I actually do a control uh, with select here, I can actually choose a region. This will then become its own cell. And I could then do things to process that. For example, let's look at a Labrassian filter, something we used to show a lot to enhance the cracks. Now that cell is dependent on the previous region, like a spreadsheet. So if I move this around, you can see it's recalculating um, the image down here, A4. And similarly, if you resize it, this will now become a bigger image. So it lets you experiment with a series of operations and save this like a spreadsheet. Now, of course, one of the other things you can do is load colorimetric images. So if we open the LAB version of this image, this is a completely different 560 megabyte image, which has each pixel as an LAB value. So if we open this one, as we pan the, as we move the cursor around, you can see that up here we have LAB values, C I E L A B, so lightness and two color components. This is a nice uh, machine independent color. Um, format that can be used. Um, you can see that each pixel is a floating point value times three, so it's actually quite a large version of the image. But you can transform this to any other color space. Um, if we, for example, change to lightness LCH, we'll have an image where we now have L, C, and H values. So NIP and VIPs are very good at dealing with color. Um, this column here is very much uh, like a spreadsheet, so you can make another column if you want. And in here we might work on something else. So I'm going to try opening a four gigabyte image. This is the kind of thing that you get from doing aerial imagery. So it's quite a, an, a large image. So it takes some time to create the thumbnail, but essentially this will now work quite well in the browser. If I just find somewhere that's not empty, we can see the stones. We're actually panning around. I think it's full screen this. Go into pan mode. We're panning around this huge picture of a glacier, which I took with a quadcopter. Now incredibly, um, this is one of the demos that uh, we love to show, if you take that B1, you can do things like um, rotate it. So let's do a free rotation. And this, uh, this output image here, which I'll just move to the side, this is loaded. 
down to the middle so we can see some rocks here. Let's zoom out a bit. Oh, there's the river. We can actually um, interactively rotate that four gigabyte image. Uh, and as we pan around this, we'll be panning around an image which has been rotated by seven degrees. So NIP actually computes on demand. Um, as we request some more pixels, you can see down here, they're actually recalculated using all the cores on the CPU. So that's a quick demo of NIP2, um, just to get you started with opening and browsing images.